you know, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is a certain type of person that I've, I've been covering a lot of different scenarios with her. A lot. Of, I've been covering her her ascension, and I mean, she's gone pretty far on many occasions. But this latest thing I'm reading about Kamala Harris, I, it's just brazen, you know. Like it's one thing for somebody to to rob you, but then to make you take your clothes off, you know. The, you know, like why do I have to take my clothes off? Uh, you have the money, you know. That's you know. I just want to humiliate you. That's what Kamala Harris does, and this latest. Kamala Harris unforced situation. She robs us and then she makes us strip. Listen to what she did, Johnson. Kamala Harris is our new vice president elect. There was this article here in LA Magazine, Ale, I guess it's Ale Magazine. She made the cover, I think, and it was a big deal. This was October. I don't know. I just heard about it today. There is a quote in this. And it was on Twitter trending here. Well, I don't think it was trending, but it was very popular that uh, a friend of the show, um, Andre, hit me up, sent me this tweet. He said, I don't know, what, what, what did he say? He said something like, this is crazy, you won't believe it, or, or what the hell, or something. The absurdity of Kamala Harris is complete. Now she's stealing stories from Martin Luther King. That's right, stealing stories from Martin Luther King. And uh, what stories did she steal, Johnson? What What'd she do this time? She says, I will never forget a moment in Birmingham when a white policeman accosted... No, this is, this is MLK. This is, this is Martin Luther King Jr., okay? I will never forget a moment in Birmingham when a white policeman accosted a little Negro girl, seven or eight years old, who was walking in a demonstration with her mother. What do you want? The policeman asked her gruffly, and the little girl looked him straight in the eye and answered, feed him. She couldn't even pronounce it, but she knew it. It was beautiful. Many times when I have been in sorely trying situations, the memory of that little girl or that little one has come into my mind and has buoyed me. Okay, so that's MLK. Those are his words. In her wide-ranging interview with the magazine, Harris, the child of immigrants from India and Jamaica, remembered the first civil rights march she attended in a stroller, from which she fell, getting separated from her family, my mother tells the story about how I'm fussing. Harris told Ashley C. Ford for Elle Magazine. And she's like, baby, what do you want? What do you need? And I just looked at her and I said, freedom. Freedom. Yeah. At least now we know why Joe Biden picked Kamala. Because they're both plagiarists. That's what. They're both liars and plagiarists. The end. How do you get a story that's so similar to Martin Luther King Jr.? How do you get that? According to the Fawning L profile, Ms. Harris remembers being wheeled through an Oakland, California civil rights march in a stroller with no straps with her parents and her uncle. At some point, she fell from the stroller. Then the adults caught up in the rapture of protests, just kept on marching. By the time they noticed little Kamala was gone and doubled back, she was understandably upset. So they dropped the child. They kept going. They didn't even know. Then they later realized, hey, there's no, where's that little baby? What little baby? Oh, our, our daughter. Oh, her. Oh, there she is, back in the ground. <clears throat> My mother tells a story about how I'm fussing. She's like, baby, what do you want? Why would you ask the baby what the baby wants? To be picked up off the ground, maybe, that you just knocked her out the stroller? I don't know. What do you need? And I just looked at, her, looked at her and I said, freedom. Now, what you need is a truth serum. 
truth serum, a spine, some ethics, moral code, some clarity, a soul, a little bit of righteousness, a will to fight for the people. Now, you need a lot of things, Kamala. And I agree. Both Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris are plagiarizing or plagiarists. Just like Biden plagiarized an RFK speech. Lied about it. Then got caught and admitted it. I don't think Kamala's going to admit to anything, though, because she didn't have to. Because she got the K-Hive. And whatever she does, whatever lies she tells, no matter how outlandish, it'll be defended. And we will be ostracized or called women haters if we call it out. But I'm calling it out anyway because I get called a lot of stuff. I get called stuff all the time. Whatever. Kamala Harris is horrible. Then, we knew that. We knew that, right? This is the worst, though. I mean, I don't know. No, it's not the worst. No, it's not the worst. The worst is letting Steve Mnuchin off. The worst is going after moms, single moms, living in abject poverty, barely making ends meet, and blaming them for, uh, I don't know, kids that they don't have babysitters for to make sure they went to school on time, and threatening to lock them up, and in doing so. Prosecuting the hell out of black people and poor people in L.A. And then when you get caught on it, start talking about one-offs about child abduction cases. When 90, over 90% of your cases were like weed possession. We got dummies who don't even look in your background to see most of your cases were not child abductions or breaking up sex rings. It was locking people up for just having a joint. Those firemen that she worked the hell out of for a dollar an hour because she didn't want to have to pay real firemen. Those people that were innocent or proven not guilty through DNA that she didn't want to release because we need workers. Or the people that should have been released because of good time or whatever. She extended their sentences. So this ain't the worst. This ain't the worst you could do. It's consistent with who she is. Power hungry, don't care about the facts, don't care about the truth, makes the truth up as she goes and will form herself into whatever bottle she's poured into. And that's why her and Biden are perfect. They're, good, they're a good team. That's why she chose them. Or that's why he chose her. Anderson Cooper, you're not keeping them honest, guy. You need to be on your job. You've, you've lost, you, you, you fell down on your job, man. It used to be Anderson Cooper's catchphrase. Keeping them honest. And keeping them honest tonight, another deadly day in Syria and... We begin, as always, keeping them honest. We begin, however, tonight, keeping them honest, holding the people who want to be president to their word. No, you're not. You're not even the same realm of keeping them honest. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Don't be fooled by corporate media talking heads misleading the people. Get your news and information from an entity that keeps it real. Tim Black. Tim Black is the host of The Tim Black Show. Independent news that leaves you informed, inspired, and sometimes entertained, but always in the know. Go to TimBlackTV.com and sign up today. The Tim Black Show is news for people who can't stand the news. See you there.